It's not very often a company caters to the whims of an outraged audience. Most of the time they just sort of run with it, or sometimes they just embrace it. This has led many consumers to be very cautious of what they're fed nowadays. Well, most consumers anyways. It's why this movie trailer that Paramount showed featuring the ugliest fucking Sonic the Hedgehog rendition ever made was seen as sort of a marketing ploy to get more people talking about it and get to people's nerves and really get people riled up and get it trending on Twitter, I guess. Granted, this tactic of garnering outrage isn't really anything new. While not an overwhelming evidence exists of companies actually using outrage culture to their advantage, there are definitely some questionable moves some companies make that are obviously offensive that often get more consumers interested in their product more so than ignoring their product. And you know, I've been burned by this sort of ideology also, but I had my doubts that Sonic the Hedgehog was the same way. Honestly, it just sort of seemed like most of the peeps working on this were just out of touch. I mean, honestly, why waste millions of dollars on a publicity stunt if most of the publicity was going to be negative? And I get it. All publicity is good publicity, blah blah blah. But not when it's risking your million dollar project on not being watched. Even the Emoji Movie, with all the negative publicity it got for having a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, it ultimately took a long time for them to make their money back. It's just really not worth it when your credibility as filmmakers just shit the bed. So now with the news that Sonic the Hedgehog will not only be changing the design, but they'll be delaying the movie just for the opportunity to quote, fix their mistakes, then it just shows that wow holy shit they really had no clue what they were doing in the first place that's i mean that's just fucking dumb more so than anything however is the incredible fact that they listened to the audience i mean really think about that for a moment like yeah sure they're only changing sonic's design much to some people's dismay for some reason, but the fact that they'd even do that and give it time is a wonderful example as to what movies should be doing and how to improve a product before it could fail. And this isn't just movies, mind you, this could be applied to video games even, but I'll get to that in a second. Then again, some people might argue that this toxic precedent that a fan base, if vocal enough, can forcibly change the nature of a product if enough outrage is given, can be seen as manipulative or maybe controlled trolling of a company that's just doing what they think is best. And while I can see that sort of in terms of most other products, I can see this as something that seems both beneficial for the creation of the movie and for anyone creatively involved. After all, if they didn't care about the people watching or the people complaining, then they wouldn't have changed anything, waste even more money on a design they would have ran with in the first place. It is a very toxic thing when entitled fans or consumers act like they know what they want and harass a company to change something about a product, yet when addressed properly, the outrage can be repurposed in a way that brings more consumers, in a way that will get anybody or everybody happy. Essentially, it's just a good thing to be transparent to your audience, like Nintendo was when Metroid needed to be delayed. I know a lot of people were ultimately disappointed, like I was, but we were all very understanding because they told us straight up, yo, this fucking sucked, uh, we didn't like the shit that we made, and you wouldn't have liked what we made, so we're redoing it. And I feel like that's what Paramount Studios did, and I truly believe their decision, whether it be brought on by some greedy conniving producer, or someone who has the integrity of the film in mind, or by some fat, obese motherfucker fan who just wanted a new Sonic design or had his gloves back, it didn't really matter. This sets a positive precedent regardless. It shows that when enough time is given to animators or anybody working behind the scenes, then there is care for the project. And it shows that any project can take the time and effort to just stop and really think about what they're doing. It shows that any company is able to listen to you, the consumer, the concerned consumer who is buying this product. And it reminds us that there are people behind the scenes who are ultimately working day in and day out to give us something pretty good. But then again, I can see the other point of view of this. You can't have people, that is fans or your audience, control the entirety of your project. So movie producers and game developers together shouldn't really fall under the whim of just fan outrage all the time. But it is important to note where that outrage is coming from and what decisions to make after the outrage has been heard. For example, we shouldn't just listen to every game journalist who has ever begged for an easy mode for every single video game that's ever existed now, should we? Nor should we listen to 
to the millions of people who want some dumbass character in Smash Brothers to appear, some character that nobody knows about, or any sort of petition that says that Goku should be in Smash Brothers. Most of the time, it's just a joke to just have a meme character join into the fray. Other times, these people are incredibly entitled and don't seem to really understand the work and effort put behind these projects. Sincerity lies, though, within the cave and chasms of echoing concerns and complaints by various different people, mostly malicious people who just want attention or feel like they're entitled to have a better product. There are those nuggets of voices that are telling you that you need to improve or that you need to improve your product itself. It takes a lot of listening and it takes a lot of patience to really sift through and understand what you want to do when you really understand the controversy behind the outrage. And it's only until you thoroughly analyze the situation that you know what actions to take. This decision not only affects movies, like I said, but media as a whole. Video game companies have been walking on eggshells for a few years now when sudden accusations of toxic work environments and the horrible malpractice of crunch time is now being brought to light. There really is no excuse for a video game company to be working their employees to death like this, or a movie company to be working their animators to death. And they could easily set back the date of a game if they needed to, but the only reason they want to get this thing over with is because, well, they need to hit that sweet release date before people get over their games, which is why hype culture fucking sucks. And listen, I know, I, I, I seem like I'm getting off track here, but hear me out. E3 is right around the corner, and it's about to drop a ton of new info on new games or sequels to old fan favorites. And it's just gonna get so many people hyped up for their favorite games to come out as soon as possible. This hype, this buzz for a product is generated to maximize potential, and companies hold it long enough to increase interest on the product so that people will buy their shit. Oftentimes, however, we have cases where, because the hype is so large, companies have to finish their product as soon as possible in order to maximize profit on people who are excited for the game. Yet, if they delay the movie or the game or whatever media they're trying to sell, people will either be outraged or they'll not care at all until it comes out. Or they're just gonna inevitably forget about the product altogether. Companies can't really risk either outcome. I keep mentioning this one incident that happened at Hello Games while they were in development of No Man's Sky, but it's very important that we remember it. When they had realized that they weren't going to make their launch date initially, they decided to tell their audience that their product was delayed. And nothing more than that, that they just needed to delay the game. The backlash they had faced, however, was much more severe than what they, or maybe anyone, had anticipated. They were given death threats. And can you really believe that? Like, fucking think about that for a second. Some douchebag sitting on his couch thought that he was he was so fucking privileged to receive a product from the fucking company that was making his game, or the game that he was about to buy, rather, not even his game, that he threatened their lives and their families just because he was too fucking impatient to wait another few months till the game came out. Of course, when the game eventually did come out, well, it didn't get, well, you know, I mean, I don't even need to mention anything. I could only imagine the backlash they had faced then, though I, I can't even blame them for not delaying the game. I bet they knew that the game wasn't going to do well if they had released it, but I'm also sure they took the death threats very seriously. And come on, they didn't really want to risk their loved ones' lives either. I mean, it, it, they just don't want to toy around, and I don't think anybody wants to toy around when it comes to a fucking death threat given to them directly to their office. I mean, I don't know. I never worked on the game, and this is all just a hunch and just speculation i guess but that shit sucks they're backed up in a corner what else were they gonna do either release the date or potentially get killed and i know there were several other underlying issues that was going on behind the scenes but honestly that definitely seems like a major factor in this whole scenario the way paramount handled it or rather the director of the film handled it seemed to garner a ton of praise and it's because of the transparency while sure many were very very unsure of the potential malpractice the animators were facing at first when it was announced that they were redesigning the character, the fact that they were able to push the movie back a few months shows that they listened. Not only to the raving fanboys who insulted them or shat on their product, but the people who cared about the ones behind the scenes. Now hopefully this announcement rings to the ears of those who often treat their workers like sweatshop employees, and we could possibly see better practices like this in the future. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. I love y'all so much. Goodbye.